Good. Um, so we have a, we have we have a couple of hours yet, and the first thing I'm going to do is lead you in something I bet you some of you have never done before, never have thought of done doing before, which is standing meditation. It's one of the four postures. Who's who's stood in meditation? One, two, three, three people, four people maybe. Buddha Rakya does he? Oh, good for him. Oh, excellent. Okay, so I, I just think it's very, you know, it's sometimes observed that the four postures relate to the four elements. Sitting, earth element, right? Lying down, water element, walking, air element, air element, and standing, there's only one left, fire element. So, hmm, fire element? Yeah. So there's, so there's, um, there is a kind of heat and energy, obviously with walking and energy too, but uh, standing is interesting. I, I, you don't need to look for it and try to cultivate it because it'll, but just um, standing is interesting. And for, again, for those of you who maybe you don't have a, well, even a small apartment will have 15 feet, just make some uncluttered space, you know, and just walk back and forth. I'm, I, I want to encourage people to sometimes set aside a day or half a day in, your, in wherever you live and have a little retreat, or three hours at a time, five hours at a time or something. But it doesn't take as much space as you think. You don't need BSV necessarily. But standing is very interesting because uh, in the way I've described it earlier, you're sitting meditation, Okay, it's time to stand, I think. And you kind of, you think a little bit about how you have to maneuver the body to mindfully rise. And now all you need <laughs> is a place beside your thick cushion, or if you happen to sit on the bare floor, you can stand right where you've been sitting. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of space. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's really neat, it's very compact. And it's different, you'll see it has a different kind of character. So let's uh, first of all stand. I know you can do it. <clears throat> so uh, we want to be stable and uh, using our old yoga techniques. Um, uh, very often, I think yoga instructors will suggest the, having the feet about the width of the shoulders, just in a stable position. And if you're standing on your cushion, you can see whether you've got enough stability or not. Some of you might be just fine. Some of you might find it a little bit uh, uh, instable. And the hands, usually in walking meditation, we keep our hands uh, in front of us or we, we keep them together. It isn't necessarily, but usually you'll see uh, uh, people doing it like that. That's, and I'm speaking about walking meditation here, that's because with the hands moving, you've got more stuff kind of going on. Okay, so um, when there's walking, you've got all this movement occurring with the legs and the feet and, and sensations and that. And if your hands and arms are also moving, there's just more that you've got to attend to or might feel like you have to attend to. So that for this reason, I think, uh, people usually suggest keeping the hands together. Sometimes some people, some teachers will stress keeping them uh, in the front of us and not in the back, but some say you know, either way is fine. But um, when you're standing, I think, um, I don't think I've got a preference. I'm just, I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it's fine just hanging to either side or sort of held together in the front or, or I would think that's better than, than in the back, but you can, you can test that yourself. So the hands will, will, will say they're, they're okay. So what's going on? Well, it's all this pressure on the, on the soles of the feet, yeah? You'll feel the blood moving differently. I mean, we've just, we've just gotten up from sitting, so the blood all of a sudden is doing something different.
And you're still breathing, I hope. But in standing meditation, like in all of the forms of meditation, we need some, uh, we need some, some ways to restrain our attention. Um, you might not find that standing with your eyes closed, you know, it might, if your balance is sometimes a little iffy, it might be best to, I would suggest just keeping your eyes kind of half open. You want some light in there and some uh, orientation to the carpet or whatever is in front of you. But if you're okay too, you can also stand with your eyes closed. Naturally, if they're open, you, you, you want to restrain them from just starting to look around at this and that and remind you of what needs to be cleaned on the floor or whatever. And we're breathing, so... <clears throat> Typically, when I uh, uh, engage in standing meditation, I either just focus my attention on the feet or I allow my attention to uh, return or to stay at the, uh, the uh, inhaling and exhaling. But if it's on the breath, there is that, that sampajanya, there is that clear comprehension. I'm standing, I'm in, in, in an erect, uh, more, uh, more of the pressure on your on on your left foot is is going, and then you 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 move slightly back the other way, and so that whatever sixty percent of it is on the right foot, just it's just a slight variation in standing. <clears throat> Something it, it changes up uh, what it is mindfulness is being attentive to. Sometimes just that little bit of variation can be helpful to keep mindfulness fresh.
the obviously uh, the mind also wanders while we're standing that's no surprise so wherever you have determined whether it's the breath or the experience of the feet themselves wherever you've determined that that's where you're going to keep your attention um, when you notice that your mind has, has wandered bring it back there Okay, maybe we can uh, mindfully make our way back to our sitting position. That's good. Good. Uh, just a couple of things come to mind. Um, different people uh, find different of the postures to be really useful for them and some people don't particularly like walking meditation for example and um, you might have found in that that it was actually quite a revelation and quite pleasant to see that it, that uh, what can how, how it how it can work and you might have found it a little bit disagreeable not to worry too much about that I would I would um, make use of it especially it's as, it is a, an especially skillful thing to do as i said earlier when you're when you're just trying to extend your sitting practice things will happen in a longer period of sitting that just can't when you know it's like thinking of making a, making a pot of soup and, and you, you keep taking it off of the stove yeah <laughs> it gets warmed up a bit and before things really start to cook at all you take it off the stove again so sometimes that that more extended period is very useful and for many people this is one of the ways that that um, uh, meditation can be extended quite quite extensively um, you might have noticed but just obviously if people have uh, any issues with low blood sugar or uh, periods of faintness for instance one way to um, just for a little bit of protection say you had a, a, a good sturdy large chair or sofa you could stand behind it with maybe your, your hands on it so there'd be that sort of stability uh, there 
um, you could experiment a little bit. But I would certainly recommend uh, keeping the eyes open if there's any kind of uh, possibility that sometimes you're a little bit unsteady uh, in standing. When you do, though, do keep your eyes focused just ahead of you. Just as you do in walking meditation, just, you know, five feet, six feet, a meter, two meters, something like that. Because if the, if the eyes are out, you're, you're starting to scan, yeah? And the mind is going there too. It's just a function of how, how, the, how we work. So keep the eyes down, keep them restrained, yeah? You're trying to keep, keep sort of things composed. That's why I was sort of thinking about what to do with the hands. For walking meditation, when they're, when they're doing this, there's just, you know, it's, there's more to keep track of. And if, there, if, if there's more uh, uh, centeredness and, and poise, then there's, there's, uh, it's easier to, for mindfulness to develop. So, so anyway, that's an experiment. And uh, please uh, use that if you can. Yes? Yeah, so I was, I was suggesting one of two. Uh, obvious, I mean, and, and you don't have to only do one, but um, uh, first of all, obviously, there is the feet. That's a very different feeling. Uh, the feet are there. So you can just keep, your, keep bringing your attention to the feet, the feeling of the feet. And one of the reasons why you could try to you know, uh, have the pressure on the right foot and then the left foot, is just to give a little bit of skillful variation to that. So the mind is rather like there's something happening when you're breathing, yeah? So you could, you could do this a bit. Or you can, you can just continue to watch the breath, realizing that if, say, the balance gets a little bit unsteady, you, you, that's where your mind is going to go, and <laughs> don't worry about you know, keeping with the breath. Uh, uh, but... Um, so I'm, I'm suggesting one of two places. In, in, in any form of meditation, though, sometimes the mind will choose, uh, and I'm going to say a legitimate object. By that I mean something in the, you know, in the, in the foundation of mindfulness, which is the body. Uh, you might find a great deal of um, uh, energy, say, uh, just f- with, with the feeling in the chest or something. I'm just kind of making this up in a way. But th- that's okay. As long as it's centered in the body, it's a kind of legitimate object. Um, things are moving and changing, but that's where the attention is. That's okay. I guess you could experiment, see how it works for you, see if that's um, um, see if that's useful. Yep. So the idea was possibly, uh, 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 or you know, standing standing still and, and watching the breath, and then and then because there is always a, I mean, there is a, a kind of variation in in, uh, in sitting practice too, where you're. There's, there's always some space. You're not breathing all, all the time, obviously. There's space at the end and the beginning uh, of each breath. And so uh, in forms that, that I learned years ago, you know, you'd, in that space, you'd then uh, you'd, you'd attend to something on the body. So this is a little bit like that. There's a rising and falling. And then in the, in the space that you have, just touching, just kind of lightly touching one or the other of the feet. And, and you're suggesting also uh, doing, the, doing the moving in that. Um, keep it simple, you know, don't, don't look for ways to, complicating, to complicate it, but it is true that the mind will, will use big gaps <laughs> in mindfulness just to start to prolif- proliferate, and you won't notice it. So, so sometimes just, you know, having enough for the mind to do, which is composed within, the, you know, your, your center of, of, of attention, is, is useful. So see how it works for you.
Okay, well, I've been talking a lot, and, um, and you've been listening a lot, and uh, we're sitting again, so I think maybe we should uh, just, just uh, begin a, a sitting period here. It's 10 to 2.